have everything ready. There we go. Alrighty. The answer is... Jesus Christ, why do I have like 400 ping? On my screen, you got 100. Oh, that's awesome. 400. You want it to be high, right? Yeah, that's oh. like uh, your score, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone scores in the top, right? <laughs> that's why I have a crown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we finally got everyone into the fucking tabletop room. Thanks, Steam. And everybody's oh, shit, received I, their Xanathars except for me. Thanks, UPS. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the goddamn DM, and I fucking want my book. I pre-ordered it like all the rest of them. Anyway, uh, it's great to see you all. How was the week? Oh, it's been good. Yeah, pretty Sick. good. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. I know for a lot of you, uh, quests have wrapped up, and episode two is around the bend. Today, we're going to be doing a uh, multi-session campaign where the goal is to have some fun, play some D&D, &D, and also... Manage to collect some boons for your episode 2 characters. You're all going to be sent off to the island town of Calypso, which is many weeks across the ocean, in a non-Skyfall, non-Faerun, but similar world. And all of you are sent there on a particular mission, which we've already discussed. We'll go over a couple particulars and get you guys right into it. So let's see here. I would like to start off with some backstories from all of your characters, and if you wish, you can try and tie them in to this adventuring group, which is headed off to the island town of Calypso, or you can let me do that. But either way, let's get some backstory. Starting with you, uh, Sebzi, how about you mm. tell me about Sebediah Clean Toes, destroyer no, no, of the no, no. wetbacks? No, no, no. Sebastian <laughs> Deep Heart Stone. Oh, okay. The greatest bard in the world. Sebastian grew up to a large family of halflings out in the middle of fucking nowhere, which is where halflings tend to dwell. Yeah. He quickly learned that he was interested in music, and while well, the rest of his halfling brethren were gearing up for another race war, mm -hmm. he slipped away in the night, never to return, to pursue his one and only dream of becoming the greatest bard in the world. Hmm. Recently, he's taken many steps to get there, such as purchasing some very fine clothes embroidered in gold with a real nigga haiku tailored into the back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He and his trusty Lucy seen many a strange thing and many a strange beast, and I will let you tie in how the fuck he got here. Okay, so I would say that you're in the adventuring group for one of two things. Either A, just because you're looking to get some coin and you don't want to be stuck out on the street. Uh, or B, because you're looking for good stories and songs to sing. What do you think? That one. Yeah, definitely okay. this So you're in this adventuring group, and a lot of the work is mundane, but you know that sometimes uh, these random jobs will lead to saving damsels in distress or defeating strange beasts off in the woods, uh, hijinks involving people that could make good songs, and uh, it's true, I believe, that the best drama is all too real. So this is why you are in the group. How about you tell me about your character there, Miles? Ah, Miles. <clears throat> Miles grew up a, a peasant in a poor family, a farming um, up until that village was destroyed by goblins. Uh, he and his younger sister were able to run away uh, and save themselves, but his parents, alas, uh, died in that tragedy. Hmm. Um, they were orphaned and thus moved to a larger city where they could uh, be taken care of. Um, at one point, uh, a group of adventurers uh, with a, a monster slayer type character amongst them. Uh, kind of, he, Miles kind of took a liking to this uh, fellow and picked up on some of the things uh, that he did and has since sworn to fight evil creatures like goblins, uh, which is why he joined the Adventurers Guild as he hopes to f find some kind of vengeance for his uh, dead parents. Okay. I went for the I went for that edgy backstory. Nice, nice. Plus five to edginess. Okay. Dead parents. You know, I'm pretty sure I saw that in a movie once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're gonna write nah. it better this time. Uh, mm. Victor Kincaid. As always. Your backstory. Uh, so 
Slee's from Sword Coast. Um, grew up in Baldur's Gate. Um, never really the strongest uh, kid, but always wanted to be a soldier. Ended up joining up with the army. And um, after years and years of being with them, um, being annoying as hell and pestering them all the time, and a little bit of influence from his family, they finally accepted him um, like an apprentice knight, or like very trainee knight, I guess. Um, they never really had any intentions to ever promote him, so uh, his claims are a little bit bullshit when he says he's a full-fledged knight. Okay. Um, I should ended ask up... before you continue, does he have noble blood in him or come from a great house, which is common for knights, or has he simply been elevated to that status through his work? Um, how about his parents are just like minor, minor nobles. Okay. A little bit. Not not uh, enough to really have like much a house influence, in but decline. enough to get his foot in the door. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they never really let him go on missions or anything like that. Um, one day he kind of caught wind of a, a secret um, mission out in the night and ended up following them. Uh, long story short, shit kind of went bad. Um, ended up in, a, in some ancient ruins. Uh, a bunch of guys got killed. He ended up getting a glimpse of a sentient sword known as Black Razor. Um, kind of came closer to it. He heard like whispers in his head. Ended up touching it for a second and then doesn't really remember anything after that. Hasn't seen the sword since. Uh, that's where he got the abilities from uh, with the pact with the Black Razor. And ever since has now just been trying to find the sword. So in the Adventurers Guild, I guess, to just see if he can find any leads to to get closer to that sword so yeah, he's a little bit crazy okay. um kind of hears voices and stuff like from the sword that was talking to him and there's whispers when he sleeps okay but, uh, big good. a big bullshitter with his knighthood and stuff like that all right so you're with the group here attempting to get some sort of a lead hoping that you can make your way up the ranks and get some information Sir Racha. Um... Oh, sorry, I should say they, they thought that I died after they found that I was gone because the rest of the guys that were there had died, so they don't really know that I'm still alive. Ah, uh -huh. okay. And so you never went and told them you just left to a different town and tried yeah, to Yeah, I woke up somewhere like somewhere close but not exactly in town and then just was compelled to find the sword and didn't even think about going back to, uh, to Baldur's Gate. Okay. Sir Racha, tell me about your character. Sir Robert Racha, born the third son of a minor noble. It's a spicy and... sounding name, says he. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever do you mean? Very. <laughs> Plain ignorance. Um, I have no, I have no idea what pun you refer to. Uh, Sir Racha, born the third son of a minor noble, uh, fortunately didn't stand to inherit much wealth and power. So they decided that he needed to go abroad and venture for himself to kind of earn up whatever he was going to uh, make do with his life. Uh, the tie-in that he's heard legend of these strange artifacts of power that he thinks worthy of his, uh, his quest here. Okay. So you're in the adventuring group, maybe for like one job or something like that, and then when you heard wind of this, uh, this quest here, you kind of managed to get yourself onto that ship and um, you're looking to get some of these things for yourself. Is that is that the gist of yeah, it? Yeah, that's the gist of it. Okay. So, with that in mind, the four of you are all aware of one another. You've all seen each other's faces once or twice throughout the guild, and some of you might actually have... Um, the names of these other party members already or maybe have formed relationships with each other i leave that up to you do you guys want to be meeting kind of for the first time here pulled together for the job or do you want to have already done a couple of jobs with you know one another something like that um yeah. probably works out if we've all had some jobs here or there with each other mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. hey um a infestation of giant rats in a local woman's house was uh, the first job where you had all worked together, and the four of you um, got to meet and slew these strange creatures that were making the way into her cellar, and 
haven't really seen too much of each other since, until being eventually pulled into one of the rooms of the, uh, the higher levels in your adventuring group. You were told that there was a secret mission coming up, and that for your unique skills, the four of you had been accepted for it. You've been told that red coins have shown up on the Isle of Calypso, a strange artifact that can be traded and bartered with uh, the gods for strange favors and, and whatnot. They're incredibly valuable, and it's not entirely known how they work, but the guild wants them, just like anybody would, and they want you to investigate the rumors that they actually exist. Now, a ship has been paid for, and all four of you are being taken weeks across the ocean towards the island town of Calypso, which is completely to its own. It has its own farming and its own little community and everything like that. It has its own laws. It's very detached from the rest of the world. They have but a single export, which actually um, really leaves the island and ever causes traders to, to come here. Um, but you're going there for this mission, having heard rumor that these coins may have shown up. Now, after weeks and weeks of travel, eventually, with all of you on the deck, the captain up by the wheel, a man of middle age with a parrot that sits upon his shoulder, and an eyeglass that he holds out in front of him, calls out, shouting, Land Ho! And a bunch of sailors on the deck look over and squint their eyes, and sure enough, all of you can see what looks like something forming on the horizon. All four of you are up on the top deck here. What do you guys want to do? Turning to the captain. Captain, is that our destination? He calls down to you and says, Yep, should be there soon. With winds like this, and he kind of turns away and um, looks off into the distance and then turns back. Should be there in maybe a couple hours. Very good. Oh, thank, thank goodness I can't wait to get off this godforsaken boat. Sailors move to and fro, pulling ropes from here to there, getting crates ready. You know that this is a merchant vessel, and though you have been good passengers, given proper rooms and free food and board, you know that their primary purpose is to do a bunch of bartering when they get there and to sail... Um, with a bunch of goods, which everyone is getting prepped now on the, the top deck here, ready to offload things the moment they land. Sure enough, this little blip on the horizon begins to get closer and closer. Would any of you guys like to do anything before the boat finally pulls into port? Just play that classic Kill Bill theme. <laughs> okay, a little musical performance. Okay. <clears throat> so you play a little bit of music here as the uh, the ship grows closer, something that the sailors have come to expect now. And eventually you can see the island town of Calypso and its details starting to finally come into view. It's really quite pretty. Despite being so far removed from civilization, there is a proper town here. It has large stone walls that go all the way around, a, a developed port that you can see. Over towards the left-hand side, which forms the northern end of the island, you can see what looks like uh, rolling hills and rows of some sort leading up to a mansion. Uh, they look kind of like, um, like uh, vineyard rows, like a bunch of different grapes that have been planted in a line. Over towards the right-hand side, you see what looks like untamed wilderness, a set of trees and thickets, as well as mountains that uh, form the southern end of the island. As you pull in closer and closer, you can see there's a couple other ships here in the port, and despite the fact that this is such an isolated place, there's a good number of hands which are wandering from one place to another. You see ropes that get thrown up to the ship, and some that get thrown back down as things start to be tied up and everybody gets ready to finally unload. The captain steps away from the wheel and approaches you all. Well, this is it. Thank you, Captain. Uh, it's an enjoyable journey. No, it was not, but thank you anyways. <laughs> not much for sea travel, are you? Well, I, I have trouble sleeping as it is, and 
on the water like that, that's just a nightmare. Mm. Well, surely you can get a bit of night's rest once you pull in. I've heard there's a couple of good places to sleep in town. Uh, you see that he kind of looks over the side of the ship and points something out to you. He, uh, he casts a finger over towards what looks to be a two-story establishment that it looks uh, like freshly painted and a lot nicer than a lot of these squalid surroundings. He says, Well, I'm not staying in here for more than a day or so, but if you're looking for good lodgings, the jeweled lamp there will take you in. A little pricey if you ask me, but if you want to get a good night's rest, it's a good place to stop by. Hmm. Thank you for the recommendation. The parrot squawks out and goes, ah, Recommendation! And uh, the captain kind of turns and stares at it for a moment, and then uh, gives you all a bow and walks away. You can see that the different crew members wander from one place to another before placing a gangplank that leaves the ship and goes down to the port below. Well, so let's get a move on here. Spent enough time traveling. Yes, yes, I agree, and I think that a parrot has been watching me this entire journey. <laughs> Suspicious parrot. I look at the parrot. Classic paranoia. Does the parrot seem suspicious? Uh, you can make an insight check. I'm, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I want this to be the first roll of the night. <laughs> it's gonna be a nat 20. <laughs> I, I, we can only hope. Uh, so it's a... It's a 19. The parrot betrays a level of intelligence you wouldn't expect to find among its kind. It could be that Victor is right. I just, I just squinted it real hard. She and... looks at you as well before eventually disappearing past the door that goes to the lower decks. And just follow my group. Being wary of any possible parrots okay. in the near future. <clears throat> Table talk illusion. Do we have any information other than somewhere on this island? No, just somewhere on this island. There's a rumor that these coins have shown up here. You can't tell anyone that you're on this mission, but it's your goal to find them. I should also mention that the guild doesn't care what happens to the ones that you find ahead of time. They just need to know if the rumors are actually true. So if you find some of these coins, they're yours to keep. Hmm. Hmm. Now just to clarify, we're not supposed to tell anyone that we're on this mission. Yes. No. It is a secret mission. You could if you wanted, but yeah, you're not supposed to. <laughs> what are the consequences? <laughs> the door to the lower decks flies open once again, and the captain calls out. You see the parrot once more, staring towards her group. He says, Oh, and I should mention, uh, in case you guys forgot, I am coming back to get you, but I won't be here until, well, about 30 days from now. So, make sure you got your stuff on the ready. I'm not staying in port for long if you get wrapped up in something. Aye, aye, Captain. He tips his hat and heads down the steps. Sailors move past your group, and you get the feeling like you're almost in the way. There's I walk down the gang. Yep. Everywhere and, walking, yeah. walking down and starting to walk towards the inn that the uh, Captain had mentioned. Okay. <clears throat> You As we're... leave the port here, seeing sailors talking to officials and hands unloading different crates and whatnot. Go towards this place that has been pointed out to you all. As we're on the way, just kind of want to say to the group uh, a little something. So, what's the plan? Well, first off, I think we should get a map of the island. See what the lay of the land is. It's going to be a bit difficult. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just... It's, it's already starting, mm. just like how you guys are doing this quest versus Monday. It's like, oh, no one has a fucking map. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> are we just... This is it's why like, you have Sriracha. What's wrong with Monday group? I, I don't know. <laughs> Tune in um... next week and find out. <laughs> so, Sriracha, it's a good idea. Get a map and set up some lodgings for the time that we'll be here. I would like to remind all of you again, we're not to speak of what our true mission is. How exactly? exactly seal we... motion. 
How exactly should we go about asking about these coins? I have a few ideas. First off, we can ask and see if other groups mysteriously mm. appeared on the island and began exploring. Mm. Yes, yeah, so ask if any weird, spooky things have been going on. Anything out of the ordinary, yes. Mm. I expect something will point us the right way. Hopefully. Rather not go digging through the dirt. Perhaps the people here are willing to barter and trade for them. Maybe they do not even know their true value. Hmm. Possible. But again, let's keep it on the keep it on the closed mouth, so to speak. Hello. Mm. <laughs> hey, Illusion. Way over to the end. What's the name of this inn? Ah. As you step up towards this inn, passing by the port street, you kind of have to step through different crowds and whatnot. For you, Sebzi, as a fairly short uh, humanoid, this is particularly difficult. Um, because Dude, I can move through spaces uh, any larger than my own, so it's actually easier. You would think, but I, I guess maybe it's a bit easier, but the stakes are higher, because if you do catch a leg to the side of the head, it's a lot worse. For sure, <laughs> the for stakes sure. are higher. <laughs> the stakes are always higher. <laughs> But you guys make your way through the crowds, finding that this port road that goes along the uh, the area here where things are unloaded is incredibly busy. There's street vendors and things like that, different shops. It looks as though this is probably the heart of the town. As you get past this road and finally come up to the establishment, you see a little sign that says, The Jeweled Lamp. Walk up and open the door. Walk okay. in. Be before I walk in with him, Mm -hmm. Can I check this this uh, high density, high traffic area and see is there any exchange of these, you know, very distinct red coins being made? Ah, make a perception check. I'll tell you what you see. It's fucking a really high roll for me. It's a seventeen. How streetwise is Sebzi? Uh, I mean, like he's a... been a traveling bard <clears throat> playing for the masses for, you know, like the last three years or something. Does Sebzi imbibe in uh, some of the more illegal substances? Uh, I think it's safe to say that Sebzi has been uh, <clears throat> experimental. Experimental. Whoa. Okay, he's had that year in college. Um, that year in college. <laughs> as you wander through the streets looking around, you see no evidence of these red coins, but you do notice something. Perhaps it's just a, a flicker, maybe you, you missaw, but you could have sworn that for a brief moment throughout the crowds, somebody nearby exchanged to someone a purse of gold in exchange for what looked like a, a bundle of herbs of some kind, which the other person quickly stuffed away into their jacket pocket. Do I recognize these herbs as marijuana? Oh, oh. My God. Do you have Remember, proficiency kids, in do herbalism? Drugs. I do not. Make a make either an intelligence or like raw intelligence or an insight check. Choice. Uh, might be the same. You can also no, do nature if you had it. Uh, I will do an insight check. Okay. Another seventeen. Oh, okay. You don't think it is, but you do think that uh, you know what it is. It's a hallucinatory substance often uh, smoked by people for its its relaxing properties and its ability to take you to other places. <laughs> uh -huh. Aha. <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll tug Sriracha in the leg and say, uh, Hey, I think I uh, just saw a guy buy some drugs over there. I see. <laughs> this is something that you partake in normally? <laughs> New mission. Uh, hey, man, you're not, a, you're, not a, you're not a cop, are you? <laughs> you gotta tell me. You, you gotta tell me if you're a cop, you know? <laughs> Depends who's asking, guardsman. <laughs> Personally. <laughs> you gotta tell me if you're a guard, you know? I do not care as long as it does not impact your ability to complete our mission. Well, well, that's where the line's gonna get a little blurry, you see. <laughs> yes, it will impact my ability to 
function, but it makes me play like a fucking god. <laughs> if it pleases you, perhaps only partake of it when we're staying at the inn. I'd rather not have you start wandering off to be able to get in a bit of a rough spot. You know what they say, man. When in a dragonborn clan, do as the dragonborn. As all of you are standing here in front of the, uh, uh like, the landing to the jeweled mm -hmm. lamp, somebody makes their way past you, trying to mm. step their way through your group. Uh, it's oh, are we just, like, standing here? Yeah, you're just yeah. standing in front of uh, because, <laughs> oh. yeah, uh, what was it? Sriracha was just about to open the door, and then Sebsu mm. was like, hey, by the way. <laughs> Can I buy some drugs? So, somebody steps up. They're wearing a top hat, a monocle, uh, there's a suitcase in hand, the garbs oh of a fairly well-off noble, uh, all in black, quite trendy. He steps up in between the group. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Hmm. I'm following. Uh, yes. you, are, uh, you are excused, sir. Pardon? Pardon? He gives you all a, <laughs> a polite nod, making his way through your group and getting up to the door and stepping inside. Cool. Uh... I guess we're following, and uh, if we're following him in, as he opens the door, I'll proclaim uh, uh, loudly enough for the people inside to hear, It is just I, the humble Sebzi, the greatest bard in the world! As you step inside? Okay. Yeah. As um, he does this, Sriracha just mouths the word humble to the rest of the party. <laughs> <laughs> no. You see a couple of people that look over in your direction as your call out has been a bit loud, and from the surroundings here, you can tell it also definitely doesn't fit with what's on the other side of the door. While it oh might my. be a custom uh, that would be overlooked in, in like a little bit of a shadier tavern or something like that, here you find what looks like a almost like a, a ballroom with tables for food and uh, raised. Uh, secondary area where there's more tables where fine nobles sit down enjoying what look to be expensive bottles of booze and um, fine and uh, very, very ornamental food placed on small plates, that kind of thing. Not only that, as you make this uh, claim to being the best bar in the world, you also note that the moment you step inside that there's music, and over across this uh, hall where people are eating, there is a stage over on the other side where you see somebody who is um, uh, playing a, a musical tune and kind of looks over in your direction. There's a, a single person playing a lute, and it looks like you've almost interrupted him. Not enough to stop his song, but he stares at your group as you <laughs> step in through the doorway here. Quickly walk forward, distancing myself from Sebzi a little bit. Okay. You definitely Stay don't close. know who he is. <laughs> Stay close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, like, like a, a toddler, you, like, leap forward and latch onto his leg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> is there a bar nearby? Ah. Uh -huh. There certainly is. Um, and it seems as though the bar also takes up a um, portion of the help desk as well. On the left-hand mm -hmm. side, you see somebody who stands there with a bunch of room keys behind him, who's talking mm -hmm. to this person who had just passed you. Uh, and then over towards the right-hand side, you see a proper bar with a bunch of stools and a few people seated there. Are there empty little... seats at the bar? There are. There's a row of four of them, if you guys wish to go and take that. I'm going to go ahead and take a seat at the bar. Well, I mean, if there's four seats and four of us, it's kind of meant to be. <laughs> you guys approach the bar to find that this uh, top-hatted man finishes his conversation with the man there, gets a, a room key, and... Heads up through a different hallway, probably off to one of the many rooms in the establishment. Uh, since you sit at the bar, instead of speaking to the man with the keys, it's the bartender who's behind the counter who approaches you all. Places his uh, um, glass that he was cleaning there behind the bar and puts his hands down. What can I get for you, fine gentlemen? Ale. Ale. Yes, of course. And you, sir? He turns over towards the next one in line. Any recommendations? That depends. There is, uh, of course, the island's attraction, the Calypso Vineyard. I have plenty of which behind the counter, if you wish to sample some. Yeah, say a bottle of local specialty. Okay. An ale shows up in front of you in short time, Miles. And How much is it? A small little bill is placed as well, uh, a little piece of paper to... Uh, 
keep your tab is mm -hmm. placed down on the bartender's side, sort of stuck into the table using like a little pin. And you can see that right now, with that single ale, you currently owe five silver. Mm. Good lord. The Expensive bottle ale. is placed in front of you, Sir Racha, and your tab is 30 <laughs> gold. Every time, oh. is it 30 gold? Yes. He's holding the bottle here, having put down the, uh, the little receipt, and it looks like he's about to um, <laughs> pour a glass for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kind of frown as I see the 30 gold. Like, hmm. Perhaps a glass. Perhaps a glass. <laughs> he says to you, Oh, um, of course, sir. Uh, just the glass, then? Yes, thank you. He removes the piece of paper and replaces it with one that says five gold pieces instead. <laughs> And pours God, you a glass damn. of wine, eventually pushing this it over wine to better, you. like, give you, like, a fucking stat boost. It is a deep, deep red that you can barely see through. So dark and crimson, it grips to the glass almost as though it could be uh, a fine blood of some kind. Like, a truly sanguine drink. Did the other two decide to get anything? Um, yes, sir. I'd like one room, please. How much are those? Ah, you can speak with my colleague over there. Uh, are you in town for long? Uh, about a month. A month. Oh, well, it's two gold per evening, as far as I know. Rates for the month, you'll have to check. I'll, I'll go over and talk to that guy then. Okay. The man at the counter here turns towards you as he sees you approach. He gives you a polite bow. Sir, welcome to the Jeweled Lamp. I see uh, you've already got you. your drinks. Uh, are you to be staying here this evening? Yeah, I'm just wondering what your rate for a group of four adventures would be for the next month. Well, each room is two gold per evening. We don't allow more than two people to a room. Okay, four adventures, two rooms each. Uh, you have some kind of adventure discount? Perhaps a night discount? <laughs> Sir. He, he turns his head here for a brief moment. Uh, you're a nobleman, are you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, from which house do you hail? You may have to forgive me, I'm not particularly familiar with uh, the noble families outside of Calypso, but I may have heard something. Well, I'm from the House, of house Kincaid, from the... Sword Coast, Baldur's Gate. Okay, I'm gonna roll for this guy's knowledge. Wow, you actually- you got lucky! He goes, ah oh, yes! Um, I am familiar with House Kincaid. If- if that is the case, are, are these your retainers here, or, uh... He kind of yes, looks yes, towards they are my retainers. Hmm. Very well. We can see about changing the... the price here. Let's say from 60 gold for the whole month and the two rooms. Um, how would how would 40 gold sound, sir? Well, I'll tell you what. How about 30 and uh, my retainer, Sebzi, there plays some music for you. He's the best bard in the world. Uh, I can't say that I've heard of this man. Well, he plays for royalty in the, the Sword Coast all the time. Hmm. Well, he'll have to speak with the manager about that. Uh, tell you what, how about we keep it at 40, and I'll get you rooms on the second floor. Beautiful view of the city. Uh, we can get you some facing port side. I believe I have a couple of rooms that have opened up there as well. Now, do, do these rooms come with any meals attached to them? Uh, the meals are not included, but I assure you that the contents of the room are very, very beautiful, and will most certainly be up to your liking and noble standards, sir. Well, I couldn't have any less for a noble. Forty gold it is. He hands you two room keys, writes a few things down, and scribbles here and there, and he says, Very well. For the whole month, then. And he gives you a bow. I wish you all a pleasant stay. If you need anything else free to ask us. And if you need anything from a group of uh, 
I mean, a knight and his retainers, uh, let me know. <laughs> I he mean... seems like he's about to say something and then pauses for a minute and uh, simply lets you walk away. <laughs> like, did it seem like he wanted to tell me something for a second? Yeah, it looked like he had a thought, like, midway there, and they just kind of, mm, eh, just didn't say it. Alright, well, I'll just look at him and, uh, if you change your mind, uh, you know where to find me. I do good work. Of course, sir. Uh, then I'll head back to the, uh, to the group. Okay. Well, uh, I scored up our lodgings for the month. Ah. Yeah. What's the cost here? What kind of you? Oh, I've already got it covered, don't worry. It's two to a room, though. It's a little pricey. Fine by me. Seems like that kind of a shindig, if you know what I mean. I imagine the rooms are well, I don't nice, know what though. you mean. Alright, then. <laughs> don't know what you mean. <laughs> Victor and I will take one. That Miles and Sebzy, you'll have the other. <sighs> I'll uh, put the key in Miles' hand. Or says he whoever's closest. I, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> if he goes to give it to Sebzy, I'll just put my hand over Sebzy. I would like a constitution saving throw from you, please, Sriracha. Oh, oh my. Oh, you got that. You got that. Mm, some good wine. <laughs> That's a... Uh, what is that? At 17? It looks pretty good. Mm. As adventurers hand. who have to travel from here to there, you have experienced all sorts of lodgings. Um, shoddy taverns, uh, fairly nice rooms, uh, sometimes just sleeping in a bedroll out in a camp in the middle of the field. However, as you sit here and sip on your wine, you find that your body adjusts to the drink, which is absolutely delicious, by the way, and the room's temperature adjusts to exactly where you would want it, as you start to feel a bit warmer here. You can feel the alcohol starting to take effect, and a, uh, um, a feeling of very pleasant, but incredibly mild and persistent drunkenness begins to work its way into your being. Jesus. I'm drunk after one glass? It's very good. 80% alcohol by volume. <laughs> Basically ethanol. Uh, let's see here. But, uh, you know, from grapes. But... Grape and all. <laughs> there must be some sort of wizardry at work here, because you did not taste the alcohol content that was in this glass as you drank it. Must have been very well disguised. Magic wine. If I'm through my first ale, I'm going to get another. Sure. Yeah, another five silver there. You can subtract that. Mm. What's the uh, current time of day? It is, I would say, between morning and afternoon, maybe like 10 o'clock, hmm. roughly. Um, 10 a good 10 a.m. drink. <laughs> oh, yeah, gotta start your morning <laughs> off proper here. <laughs> uh, turning to the bartender, we are new to the island. Is there where we could perchance purchase a map hmm. by the, the city or the surrounding area? A few general stores up and down the port side road. You'll find all manner of stuff. Um don't have anything here. You guys looking for something in particular? Oh, Perhaps. just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, maybe. Sometimes. <laughs> just looking to explore the island, see what the sights are here. Hmm. Perhaps take a look at the vineyard, the wine here. It's fantastic. Seems like a very well-to-do tavern. I'm sure many people must come in and out of here. Any good rumors about fascinating oh, beasts? Any good stories? Mm. Oh boy. The bartender stares at your group, and I'd like all of you to roll insight. Mm. I'm gonna fucking insight the shit out of this motherfucker. Get him. Ooh, uh, please not, type in I'm what not. your hand rolls are. <laughs> Holy fuck, you guys all rolled the garbage. Um, so I reroll ones, bro! Except for Baller, because he rerolls ones. Into a I 20. Think... I rerolled a 1 into a 20. Let's go. Okay. So. All of you, except for, um, except for Miles and Sebzy, think that the bartender is just kind of 
kind of tight-lipped. Um, but for, for um, you two, staring at this man, you're mm -hmm. pretty sure that what's going on is that mm -hmm. he has a wealth of information, but he doesn't mm -hmm. quite trust you enough to tell you any of it yet, having just met you. That's what you think is going on here. Mm. The bartender kind of gives a shrug and says, oh, well, you know, a few things happen around here, but Calypso's a pretty um, quiet island town, other than the trouble that the sailors bring in every now and then. There's not a whole lot going on. I take a, a piece of gold and slide it forward onto the counter a little bit. Nothing interesting. I find it hard to believe that even a quaint town such as this has nothing going on. Hmm. <coughs> he takes the gold coin from you, mm. and uh, he leans down a little bit, and he mm. says, Sir, um, my shift will be finished around this evening, just after dinner is served. If you wish to speak more on the subject, uh, you can find me just behind the building. The sun begins to set. How does that sound? Perhaps we can talk then when I'm grabbing a smoke. I give him a, a solid nod and I say, thank you for your time. And I don't believe we've, I don't believe I've got your name. Ah. I put out my hand to like give it a shake. The name's Pedro. Miles. It's a pleasure. Does he have a uh, any kind of mustache or? He is a bald man with what looks to be four strands of hair that stretch from one side of his head to the other. <laughs> and yes, he does have a mustache. It ends in curls that kind of accentuate his little cheeks. I love Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro new best is my NPC. <laughs> new best semi-racist NPC. I want to go back to Len Maw, guys. Um, oh yeah, when I come back, I'll just, uh, I'll let Sebzy know, like, Sebzy, I tried to talk you up to that guy over there, uh, you gotta talk to the manager and you might be able to play, uh, by the way, you've played for royalty on the Sword Coast. i played for more royalty than that. Are you whispering this with the, like, <laughs> with the, the bartender? bartender? No, no, this is like, uh, this is Sebzy aside, like, not in front of the bartender. Okay, alright. I mean, he's got to go way further down to talk to me, you know what I'm saying? True, yeah, like his head's like under the bar now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much there's just some fingers tapping on the top of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that's it. How's the drink? Just like an okay sign appears. <laughs> Thumbs up! <laughs> <laughs> okay. The bartender kind of uh, leans back away from you now, Miles, mm -hmm. and he says, Well, if any of you needed some more drinks, I'm happy to make some recommendations. The food here is quite good as well. I just, I just finish and down the ale that I just purchased, and I say, No, I think that'll, that'll be good for now. And then I'm going to look to the group and say, Shall we uh, start our day? <laughs> I'll stand up on my stool so that I can make <laughs> eye contact with the bartender. <laughs> I'll ask him. I'm looking to speak with the manager of this fine establishment, and uh, perhaps uh, can show the musician over there a thing or two about how to play. Hmm. The barkeep seems to pause for a minute, and he looks at you. What is your performance bonus? Ten. You have a My plus 10 God. to performance? Yes. Jesus. Fuck. Squeeze me. Okay. <laughs> he looks at you and he says, hmm. Well, the manager is in. I won't lie to you all. However, I don't want to go and interrupt him or just anything. Uh, do you have any papers I can show him? Uh, perhaps a name of uh, high standing? My good sir, my name is Sebzi, and I am the greatest bard in the world, I assure you. <laughs> let's let's roll for luck to see if this man has heard your amazing tales and believed them. You need a 19 or a 20 on this roll, sir. I mean, do they not see his, his like, outfit? or The, the... <laughs> the fucking cape with the real nigga haiku on it? <laughs> yeah, like... Yeah. Not... <laughs> no, it's on the other side of the bar. He pauses for a second, and he says, hmm... I would not feel comfortable uh, going to grab the manager for for this. Uh, if you, can... I, I assure you, sir, bringing your manager, 
bringing me to the attention of your manager would be in your best interest. <laughs> All of our best interests, really. You wouldn't want nothing. Once, uh, once word spreads of my talents on this island, people will be flocking here like, like bees to the hive. Hmm. He looks over in your direction, Miles, to see what your thoughts are on this. I give him like a shrug and a nod. <laughs> a shrug and a nod. Yeah, like yeah, he's pretty good. Make a persuasion roll, please. Sure. <laughs> uh, Miles. You can do that? That's a three. <laughs> what, what kind of fucking weird flick shit? <laughs> <laughs> There's the a flick top. command. What the fuck? It's, it's very useful. It didn't get me a good roll, but it's very useful. The bartender says, please, I, I mean no offense, sir. I um, simply do not think that this is uh, something that I should bring to his attention. I say, I think we'll be going now anyway. Right, Sebzy? Table talk. Yes. How fucked would we be if I just uh, pulled my loot out and just dropped a little ditty on this dude? Well, there is currently, like, loot being played off in the distance, and it's How like a full house. How heavy is Sebzy? So, I mean, it's up I to mean... you what you think would happen if you just interrupted everything and started playing at the bar. And as far as how heavy Sebs he is, he's probably like a hundred and something pounds. Mm. Yeah. With all of his gear. Pick up a bull? <laughs> Pick up a bull for yeah. sure. <laughs> yep. I, I just I just kind of gesture for the entire group. I, I think it's about time we head out anyway. I oh, don't know, man. You don't become the greatest bard in the world by not taking a couple of risks <laughs> here and there, if you know what I'm saying. Sebzy. <clears throat> I <laughs> Sebzy. I begin to pull out my loot. I I can I pick up Sebzy? You, I you think can. we should go Sebzy. What kind of check is that? Grapple? Uh, no, it, it, are you gonna struggle to avoid being picked up, or are you gonna concentrate on your loot, or I won't, what? I won't hold his arms uh, either, so if he's playing as we're leaving, I'll <laughs> let it happen. Yeah, I'll just play. I'll, okay. I'll play. I'll play my little heart out until they drag me out of there. Make a performance check with disadvantage, because you're playing <laughs> while being carried. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Reroll once! Are they? I, oh my god. <laughs> a 15. Okay. You start to play while uh, being carted off, and as you're playing, you think for a brief moment before you guys uh, kind of finish going up the stairs and heading into the hallway where your rooms are, that you see the bartender looking on, and he goes, oh, it's not bad. The <laughs> <laughs> seed has been planted. The seed has been planted. Also, you notice that all of the eyes in the room are, like, on you, and the the bard who's playing across the way looks very disgruntled, and a bunch of other people are, like, kind of like, what's going on? Like, is this part of the thing? Like, two bards? And then watch you get, like, carted off and pulled away. <laughs> yeah. And now in the secondary hallway the, here on the top floor. To put it in floor. context, there's, like, like, you pick me up around the waist, and you mm -hmm. just, like, start to move away with me, and I'm just, like... <laughs> Facing towards the crowd, <laughs> staring the other bard dead in the eyes, <laughs> with like the most stoic expression on my face, just proudly playing. Oh my god, perfect. <laughs> I can see it. Okay. Oh my god. You're now so in the hallway, hallway. I'm just gonna tell them, uh, by the way, like, uh, you guys, uh, you're my retainers, so that's what they think, so, you know. I'm sorry? You're my retainers? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> Look, just, you know, play along, it's getting us a deal, so... I'm gonna give this same fucking campaign to every group and just see all the ways they fucking just <laughs> tear it apart. Oh, this is beautiful. What's a player for, you know? Exactly. Right? Oh my god. I... Should we not get our day started? It is still early in the morning, and... 
Yes. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'd like to get a jump on this. Look, hey, I had I had an idea that that, that wine you drank pretty red, like really, really dark red, like magical <laughs> secret item red. I'm not seeing where you're going with this. Nor do I. I. Check out the vineyard. I'd like all of you to make a uh, perception check for me, please. Seventeen. Uh, if anybody got less than a ten, they don't notice this, but I think all of you got enough. Since having that glass of wine, your friend Sir Robert Racha here has been smiling constantly, a permanent but slight grin staying on his rosy cheeks the whole time. He seems like he's in pretty high spirits. And likewise, <laughs> Robert, you feel pretty optimistic and, like, Anything that you're about to go and do, like, eh, it'll probably work out. That sort of feeling. Is there uh, any way to No, I figured that might be a good idea. Of... Worst case, we got a free sample of over there. <laughs> Is there any <laughs> way to see if he's, like, under some kind of magical influence? Do you have proficiency in arcana or medicine? Uh, da -da -da -da. No. I uh, don't know. You can make your own conclusions nope. about that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Are you guys headed to your rooms to put, drop off some stuff or whatever? Um. I have nothing. So Miles I'm... has nothing to drop off, so he's I just, just go ready to, to go. Feed. See how nice it is. Sure. Okay. Taking your room key, you head off, finding that uh, room 202 and 203, um, right next to one another, are set aside for your group. They both face off into the port, and so um, they're on like the kind of left-hand side of the hallway. As you take your key and make your way past the door, you find a room that is definitely fit for a noble. There is a fine painting that sits on the wall, a beautiful bed. Um, it's like a double wide bed with a large frame that looks very sturdy, made of probably a nice oak. And the, um, the blankets that have been laid over top of it look like a fine velvet with uh, like little golden tassels that hang off of the side. The windows have uh, a set of curtains that block the outside view, but as you step in and kind of give a peek past them, you can see the port. And you can actually see your own ship down there where you had been dropped off and can see all the stuff that's coming and going from there. There's a wardrobe nearby as well. Um, when you take a peek in it, you can see the wardrobe is filled with clothing that would be fit for a noble. It's really nice lodgings. Oh, and also there is a nightstand over by the bed, which has uh, the signature item of the um, of the establishment. There's a little a jeweled lamp that sits there. Taking a taking a very in depth sweep around the room, do I find any like hidden peepholes or like hidden hatches or anything? Oh, make an investigation check. Can I do it with them? Because as soon as, as soon as we were going in there, I was going to do the same thing. Like, look, Sriracha, room this nice. There's got to be some kind of secret part. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just nodding along. I was thinking the same thing. Sure. Yeah, you can make a check too. The fifteen. Oh. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> twenty. Not twenty. You don't think that there's anything, Sir Robert, as you wander from here to there. The room looks like it's pretty good. It's all tidy and everything. And likewise, Victor, as you take your uh, gander about the room, you find that there is no there's no hidden compartments or anything like that. No uh, eye holes in the painting where someone would watch you. It's it's just a really nice room. Well, that's disappointing, but I I don't think there's anything here. <laughs> the window panes are on uh, they're on hinges. That, that could be closed <laughs> from in here if you need to get outside, I guess. But that's that's, that's about sort it. of like a secret door. I'll uh, I'll open and close the windows a few times, seeing if it brings me any kind of <laughs> joy at all or satisfaction, and then I shake Closure. my head no and close them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my! If you guys check the second room, the one that's meant for um, Sebzi and Miles, you'll find it mm. is identical. Well, I'm satisfied. We're ready to head out. Finally. 
Yes, let's uh, let's just store our stuff, and I'm gonna I'll summon my my pack blade and then throw it on my bed, and then start to leave. Okay. Now with that, the two of, or sorry, the four of you uh, wander down the hallway, step down the steps, pass by the bar and all, and your guys are going outside. Yep. Yeah. Probably get I'll, a map, I'll throw right? a wink at the bartender on my way out. Like you know what to do. He gives your group a wave, like, you know, see you later, and uh, you guys all step outside. Now, outside here, you're back on the busy main port street. Where are you guys going? What are you guys doing? Um, is there any general store in, like, direct line of sight? Further down the way, yes, you can see that there's a general store nearby. I point it out and start making my way. I'm following. <clears throat> Uh, uh, before they take a couple steps, I will say, uh, well, you all go off to do your, uh, shopping or perusing. I will stay here on this center street and, uh, attempt to glean, uh, any information about these, uh, things. Is Sebzi telling the truth and can I insight that? <laughs> I'm not going to bother insulting him. I'm just going to whisper him, Good luck finding your, uh, <clears throat> items. Marijuana cigarettes, as they call them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not my intention at all. <coughs> okay. You can insight, you can insight check that if you want. Uh, I'll oh. tell you what you get. I don't believe him, so... Do you intend uh, to actually uh, do what you said? Yeah. Okay. But he doesn't uh, know that. Five. Yeah, you don't know that. You have no idea what Sebzu's gonna do. The moment that your group wanders away, it's anybody's guess. As with the first time I ever had to work with him, I feel nervous. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> Okay, are you guys headed to the general store? Yep, yeah, we're off to the closest general store. So, Sebzi, you're out on the street here and your group wanders away. What are you going to do here? Uh, travel a fair distance away from the, the tavern that we're staying at. Um, and look for something that I can stand on to be above the crowd. Oh, no. Stepping in the opposite direction down the road, you find that on the port side, there's a great deal of containers which have been left there, waiting to be used for different things. If you want, you could hop up onto one of those. Uh, yeah, will it put me, like, at least eye level with people, or maybe even a little bit above them? You could go even above that if you wanted to climb further uh up. Oh, I'll go as high as they go. Okay. There's three crates stacked onto one another, and you find your way to the very top. Now, uh, your feet are roughly about head height for most people. And as you stand there, a couple um, of passers-by seem to look over towards you, clearly seeing that something's about to happen. Uh, so this is a two-fold act. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play some fucking poppin' jams. But while I play that, I want to be on the lookout for A, suspicious characters, B, these hallucinogenics, and C, <laughs> red coins. Okay. Please roll for your pop and jam, sir. That is persuasion, by the way. Okay. What? Or Not sorry, performance. performance. Smoke weed every day. Smoke, smoke. A 19. 19. You begin to play something, and I'd like to know, what is it? Is it like a like a slow sort of melody, or are you, like, headbanging, or, like, what's going on here? Uh, well, these are common folk, right? Yes. Yeah, you see, like, a L nobleman large... here and there, but here it's and there, mostly yeah. peasantry. So I'll play... I'd, I'd probably start out with a couple of, like, you know, peasant tones, like, hey, diddle, diddle, cat in the fiddle. Hmm, something then, recognizable uh, for the commoners? Yeah, something recognizable for the commoners to draw them in. And then I hit them with that really absurd shit, you know, I'm talking about, like, canon in D minor. Okay. 
your tactic seems to pay off. You start with something simple. It's a, it's a very recognizable tale with a very simple structure to it, a couple of lines here, a couple of lines there, that uh, the tale is a courageous hero who is well known, who slew a dragon back during his day, and then right as you finish that, then things get weird, and people really start to pay attention. While this is happening, I'd like you to make a perception check as you look for those three things. Okay. God damn okay. it, baller. I'm, I'm gonna get it over the way. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I swear to God! A 19! A 19. Okay. Looking throughout the crowd, you don't see anything in terms of red coins, nor do you see anything in terms of uh, drug dealing that might be happening. But you do definitely see that amongst this uh, sort of semicircle of people who are now pausing to listen to your very beautiful music, that there are some who definitely seem like the shady types. You see a guy who has a, like a couple of tattoos around his neck here. It looks like he might be a, a convict of some kind. Um, there's a few kilts of daggers that can be seen protruding above his belt there. Um, there's a few guys like that, but that's about it. What you want to do with that, I leave up to you. Meanwhile, back over at the shop, you guys all step up to Calypso General and step inside. Quick question. As we're walking down the street to Calypso, are there any particularly, like, out-of-the-ordinary individuals on the street? You see that the Isle of Calypso is almost completely human. Mm-hmm. And in most cities, there is, like, you know, probably anywhere from 5 to 20% of the other races. Uh, halflings mm -hmm. and gnomes, that kind of thing. Maybe a dragonborn mm -hmm. here and there, an elf. But while you do see one or two of these, it's very, very low. And you get the idea that most of the people here probably come from, like, the same sort of background. Right. Um, as far as odd people, uh, you see people that look like traders, merchants, uh, you see guardsmen, you see nobles, uh, peasantry, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nobody at, like, the opening of an alleyway or anything? Uh... Hush-hush deals, or... Oh. You find that the alleyways that lead off of Port Street definitely have characters that stand mm. in the way there. Uh, any of them having conversation? Yes, though when you look at them, they seem to stop their conversations. Hmm. <clears> hmm. <throat> Do you wish to keep staring? No, I'm not going to keep staring. I'm just <laughs> thinking. Sure. If they, if they stop their conversation stations then i can't really do much uh up and before they stop their conversations what are they saying because i can read lips oh i was gonna say you can't hear them but that'll work make a perception check for me see how much of it you managed to get before they <laughs> notice me staring at their mouths so that's a nine 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 okay. One guy says to the other, Yeah, I don't know. I think a ship's coming in this evening. The other one looks at him and he says, You're supposed to be here like fucking days ago. That fucker over there is looking at us. I, I look away and <laughs> keep walking. <laughs> okay. All of you come up to the general store. <laughs> Are you stepping inside? Yeah. Yeah. Hastily. Okay. You find a portly fellow inside who mans the counter, and also uh, displays and wall racks all filled with different adventuring gear. A man with a little name tag that says Joe on it calls out and says, uh, Welcome to the uh, Calypso General, friends. Uh, what can I get for you all? Uh, a map, if you have it. Map? A map of the this island, to be exact. Oh, I see. I see. Staying, not going. I do have a map. He goes around the corner and pulls something off a wall nearby. A collection of scrolls. He pads his finger over a few and goes, Ah, this one. Takes the thing and unrolls it in front of you all. As you get a brief moment, you see it details some sort of an island. And then he lets go of it, letting it roll back up. So here's two gold. Uh, I'll put it forward. Okay. He takes the two gold and hands it to you. He says, oh, good. 
Plenty of folks out there that barter for too long. Nice to meet some straightforward folk. <clears throat> mm hmm. Um, do you have any other interesting things, or perhaps you've heard of something? Anybody need help in this area? Hmm. Not sure. We are I a group of adventurers. We're a group of adventurers, and, well, always looking for the odd job. Monsters to slay, that sort of thing. Hmm. Talk around town is that there's still that monster in the lower wards. Uh, apparently, a few more folks went missing off the southern roads. Guards looking to take care of some bandits down there. Hmm. Any word on the this monster in the lower wards? What, what more information do you have on it? Horrible thing. Shows up in the night, takes people away, and they're never seen again. Oh, well, that's no good. I think we might mm. be able to do something about it. Do you know anyone we can talk to who might have some more information? Well, I mean, you can talk to me if you want. Uh, you can go and ask the guard, but they won't do anything. Gave up many was, years ago, they did. Who was the last person who was taken? Oh, I don't remember what family they were. Uh, a couple of simple folk down there. I think they lost their mm. son. It was a while back. Maybe the guards will, at the very least, divulge that information. Perhaps. I mean, one can hope. I think it was the, the Jenkins lad or something? Hmm. In any case, it's been going Terrible. on for years. No one's ever found him. Say, Joe, mm -hmm. seen a few odd characters here. We just got horror. Is it... Frequent that you see uh, a lot of out-of-towners on the island? Out-of-towners? No, not really. I mean, we get traders that come by. Everyone's always looking to get some of that Clipso wine when the season comes around. But that's about it. See, hmm. sometimes people bring in tools and food and all the like, but we pretty much have everything that we need on the island here. Oh, what is it about that Calypso wine that seems to make people very, well, coming back for more, I suppose. Ask your friend here. He's got the look on him. He points in your direction, Sir Racha. Kind of nod. It's a mighty fine vintage. That it is. Mm -hmm. I rarely get enough to really have a taste, but I remember every time that I have. How, uh, how long is he going to be grinning like this? Well, how oh, much did you have, son? <laughs> oh, just a glass. Well, you're probably good for a few hours. I mean, at least you get your money's worth. Who owns that vineyard, by the way? Uh, the Calypso family. I guess that makes sense. So, you, well, if you're out of towners, you probably saw up on the... North end of the island there. Bunch of bunch of hills and vineyards. That's their mansion up there, that little villa. Been there, well, rumor goes, since the town was founded. Quite the estate up there. Mm-hmm. Perhaps we'll take a visit. Well, uh, let's just say the Calypsos kind of keep to themselves. I don't know if I'd really just go waltzing up there unless you got business with them. Mm. Yes, perhaps I do, do have they... business with them. You know how it is with the nobles and everything. And... Do they not come down into the city? Uh, well, I, I hear that they do every now and then, but I rarely see it. Hmm. You know me, I just work my what 9 to 5 and head home, and that's about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Speaking of which, <laughs> are you kind of adventurers looking to buy anything else other than the map? Oh, well, perhaps. Do you have any, uh... And I kind of, like, look around this store, um... You got weapons, arrows, you're looking for le some leather, I got some of that. Um, climbing gear, if you're headed to the mountains or something, I, I got it all. Hmm... At the moment, uh, I don't know about... You two, but I think I'm rather set. Uh, maybe just some rations in case we venture out of town. Mm, good man. Six silver each ration. Okay. 
How many are you buying? Um. Oh, disconnected. Oh. <laughs> None, apparently. Oh. oh, tabletop just had a seizure. Steam, why? I love seizures. Because fuck you and everything you stand for. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> fuck you and all the things you love and hold dear. Mm -hmm. I just catch you niggas trying to have fun. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Y'all thought this was some kind of game? I believe in you. Well, uh, it's not coming up. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. When I go to press join game on you, Illusion, it brings me to my own room. Yeah, something's and fucked out. And you're not in the browser list right now. Okay, I'll close down tabletop and uh, reopen it. Uh, we're at 6 o'clock anyway. Let's take a brief 5-10 minute break while we get this sorted out. Hmm. Oakley doakley. A bio break and go ahead and fix up tabletop's nonsense. I'm gonna go ahead and get some, uh, get some snacks. Snacks sound good. Mm. The opening tabletop. Hot fix these guys have here. Does tabletop need another download? Uh, it didn't update when I restarted it, so I don't know. The room's back up now. I don't know if it's gonna work. I see you. Oh fuck! I didn't save before reloading it. So you guys will have your little peons and stuff, I think. But if you wrote stuff down on note cards, it might be. Gone. Not me. Fuck. God damn it. Alright, I'll be right back.
I return. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. start in a brief minute here. Is everybody back? Hi, hi Captain. I'm here. Ballerino? Yeah, I'm here. Sick. Sick, bro. Sick. <laughs> Let us begin, then. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, I'm not ready. I have this thing. Back to the fun and exciting days of buying rations! <laughs> so, off in the street, Sebzi, you've noticed that amongst the crowd which is gathered round, there are certainly a few shady types. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Meanwhile, down the road, the general store shop opens and you watch as your three companions step out. And all of you can see down by the port what looks to be Sebediah, putting on a performance for a small crowd. I shake my head. I nod Listen. approvingly. <laughs> Will he never not learn to get himself into trouble? I doubt it. Well, skills um, like that, you can't just let them go to waste. I look for, um, any guards. Closest ones. There's a couple walking by. Um, can I walk up to them? Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm uh, an adventurer. I've come to this town a brief stay as uh, my travels take me. Um, I heard that there might be some sort of problem in the lower ward, some kind of creature taking people in the night. The other guard starts to chuckle as well as the first one finishes. He turns to you and goes, Uh huh. And do you have any information about that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Sorry, yeah, I do. Don't waste your time. And why is that? Look, uh. Geez, you guys must be really new. It's. When something goes missing, and a loaf of bread disappears, the monster took it. Okay? Hmm. Do you understand where I'm going with this? I understand where you're going with this. Who was the last person who was taken? God, I don't know. Claims all the time. Last time I think it was uh, the Jenkins boy or something. Where do the Jenkins live? He points off 
towards a set of rickety houses densely packed together. <sighs> right. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. And I just walk back to my group. As you're walking away, you hear one of them goes, ah, monster. <laughs> Goddamn asshole guards. Um, so I'm just gonna walk back up to my group. Um, it's all right with a lot of you. I'd like to further explore this monster avenue. Hmm. If there is a monster, I think we could take care of it. Probably get compensated. I give him a nod. Mm-hmm. Should we go check out the lower wards, grab Sebzi on our way? Mm -hmm. So we ask around before we head there and see if we can gather some more information. I think the, we're going to get... conflict between what the shopkeeper and the guard said. I think we'll get the most relevant information from the lower ward. I suppose. Well, we can always ask around on our way there. Looking down the road to where Sebzi's playing, does it look like he's almost done? There's really no way to tell when Sebzi gets going with it. <laughs> Fair enough. Can we at least walk over to the crowd? That's a mess. Sure. Sebzi, you see while you're playing here that your companions soon join the crowd too, standing but a few feet away from you in this semicircle that's gathered. Um, looking around, um, not being in the semicircle, but being kind of on, staying on the outskirts, are there, is there anybody, uh, anybody having conversations? Uh, no, they seem to be mostly just uh, paying attention to the playing, and mm -hmm. any any talk that's going on seems to be kind of like the mundane stuff you would expect. Um, somebody's mm -hmm. talking over prices of potatoes and how ludicrous they've become this year, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Um... Well, seeing that my mates have showed up, I suppose I'll wrap this thing up. Uh, I've given them a taste of something they're familiar with. I've given a taste of, uh, of the rich lifestyle. Now I'm gonna fucking turn everything on its head and hit him with a Sebzi original. Oh no. And I'm gonna play, uh, We Will what? Rock You by okay. Queen. <laughs> no, by Sebzi. <laughs> but, well, yeah, but they don't know that. <laughs> I'd like you to make another performance check, please. Oh my God. All right. I thought it was going to be I'm something I'm trying to get like... the crowd involved in this one, too. All things considered, I thought he was going to be playing something like Bitches 20. Ain't Shit or... With the the real nigga hike. hike <laughs> I, I kind Sorry, of had other expectations. Somewhere. Yeah. The crowd seems to hop in, and when you go to finish a line and kind of let them take over, they do so, picking up on the fairly simple lyrics. And before you know it, um, you have a few people who are kind of banging along with the beat here. Somebody pulls out what looks to be a flask and begins to start drinking. Mm. Nice. Uh, alright, well, I'll end my performance, and as I end it, I'll say, uh, Thank you all, you've all been wonderful tonight, today. My name's Sebzi. I'm the greatest bard in the world. Holla at you, boy. You take a bow, and as you do, uh, hear the sound of a bunch of coins being tossed on the ground towards you. Mm. I'll scurry around and pick them up. In total, you find... Uh, that's, a, that's not a bad luck roll. <clears throat> you find that in silver there's quite a bit, and also a few coppers as well. You walk away with 20 copper pieces and 37 silver. Dank. Not a bad day. That's like six, no, seven beers. <laughs> I forget what the copper conversion is. So or I didn't almost a glass of wine. Or almost a glass of wine. Ten to one for everything. 
Oh yeah, I guess. No, not Electrum. Fucking Electrum. Yeah, we don't use Electrum here. Duh. <laughs> Speaking scrubs. to the guy who made his world have just four seasons with no months. <laughs> <laughs> you think we're fucking around with Electrum? I don't think so. How many Electrum is that? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> So you rejoin your companions the anger here. The gods. <laughs> you would all see that uh, this performance not only has uh, kind of attracted attention, but also gotten some coin into your friend's pocket. As Sebediah returns to you, his uh, his coin purse full with small change. So uh, what's going on, fellas? Oh, well, there's some word about a monster in the lower ward. A child-eating monster. Oh, I don't fine. know that they. I don't know that they said that, but. Well, the Jenkins boy. That's one boy. We know it has a taste for at least one child. <laughs> <laughs> Profiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Nevertheless, I suggest we investigate it. I think this might play quite well to our strengths. So I guess we're just uh, mm -hmm. heading to the lower lower uh, ports. Okay. You guys travel down the main port street and eventually have to hang off towards the left, going to uh, sort of squalid dwellings. To your left and right, you see nothing but houses and houses, many of whom are cobbled together and built into one another, like some sort of ramshackle um, approximation of uh, what a housing block should be. The materials are very crude. The building skills seem to match as well. What do you guys want to do? Uh, kind of first person on the street, I just kind of want to go up to them. Excuse me. Uh... Sir, do you know where the uh, Jenkins residence is? He looks over at you and goes, Who's asking? It's not important. <laughs> Diplomacy increased. <laughs> um, oh, is... I'm going to walk up and say, P Pardon my retainer. Uh, is, is Victor he... Kincaid of House Kincaid, a noble <laughs> from Baldur's Gate. Uh, that's who's asking. Make an insight check, please. Oh god, I know, I know, I know what he's thinking, Ooh. motherfucker. Anyone? No, no, Ooh. just uh, just Victor here. Four. Oh, just Victor. A four. Yeah. If only I could have rolled. He gives you a knowing glance. This old man on the street here and his poor trappings. Hmm. Well, surely, if uh, the Kincaids are looking for some help. We're looking Spare for the a monster. Bit of coin, perhaps. God, Miles pay the man. Shame. <laughs> Miles pay the man. I'm paying this man nothing. Pay him for his information. No. Oh, sigh. Retainers. What I'll, can I'll you walk do? For it. Sir, we're looking for some kind of creature that's apparently been stealing children. We're really looking to profit off of this. What? No, I was just... Look, I mean, you gotta pay a man you? for his work. Well, work? Work? I'll give him We're ten silver. We're trying to be the ones that are helpful here. I'd like you to make a persuasion roll, please. Well, I was gonna give him ten silver. Okay. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> wow. He oh. doesn't seem like he's having any of it. Sebzy, you step up and hand him ten silver. And he, uh, he takes the coin and goes... Finally. And then he double takes and stares back at his hand and he goes, Hot damn! And he sits up from his chair here <laughs> and like knocks over what he was doing. He had like a washing board there and some clothes and he just goes, Well, it's down this way, sirs! And he starts to step off. <laughs> so your clothes are dirty again. You just knock them over. Sir, we're we'll getting new I ones! Just, I just. We're getting new ones! I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, as I as I step off to follow him, I turn to my companions and just give them like a "What's up? What's good with it? Who you think you was?" <laughs> and then I turn God. back around so that they can see the real nigga haiku. 
I'm just oh. gonna compulsively like pick up all his clothes and put them back in the washing bin before I run off. Okay. You're led down a winding set of streets, or if you could really even call them that, it's just different alleyways, some wider than others, um, some perilously small, the kind of which feel pretty good for you, Sebsy, being a halfling, and for the rest of you, uh, rather uncomfortable. But eventually, you get there, coming out to an area where there's a, a small little patch of dirt, which seems to form like a very basic yard for four houses, one of which looks to be the one in question. Pointing towards this uh, this little abode, the man continues. That there's the Jenkins house. You guys, uh, well, if you're doing all that monster business, be careful. Do you know anything of the monster? All I know is that, well, in all my time, I've heard a lot of rumor, but I've never actually seen him, and I want to keep it that way. I'll just give him a nod, and I'll, I'll go up and knock on the door. Okay. <clears throat> Knocking on the door, there's a brief moment before some footsteps come up, and eventually the door begins to open, revealing what looks like a man who's... Probably in his like late forties, maybe early fifties, with a, a fairly wrinkled face. Here, he looks quite worn, and he hmm. says, "Yeah." Excuse me, is this the Jenkins residence? It is. Um. Well, hello. My name is Miles. Of uh, me and my compatriots, um, are adventurers. Uh, we heard that there was a monster problem in the lower ward and that perhaps your son was the most recent victim. Do you have a minute to talk? I'd like you to make a persuasion roll, please. Okay. Can do. Eight plus ah, solid nine. The man seems to only become more exhausted when you give him your request, and he says to you, uh, "You know what? I uh, I'm done talking about that business. You guys, just go on your way here." I put my foot in the door if he tries to close it. He well, does. I I I I I push you out of the way and say, "Dear God." You, you, you're, you're, you're pretty awful at this. Why don't you step aside and, and let me speak to this, this, this poor, poor gentleman who obviously is being through a very rough time. Turn he to addresses him. you next, Sebsi, and he says, "I don't really want to talk to you either. Although I, I appreciate your, your kindness and all, I just, just want to back to my business." Sir, we're looking to do. You and the town a service if whatever befell your boy would happen to another person and you didn't help us, then mayhaps you'd have that on your conscience as well. Make a persuasion roll, Sebsy. A guilt roll, if you will. God damn. 26. God damn. Little silver tongue devil, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on devil. It says. Alright. But we're gonna make it quick, alright. That's fine with me. It was a while back. It was, uh come home from some work, uh, some lifting down at the docks. The sun was here, and uh, well, it was getting late. I went to step outside to call for him. He's usually messing around with his friends in the alley just nearby here. And, uh, well, I saw it. It was like a, like a big shadow. Like, it looked like a man, but it must have been ten feet tall when it went off. I only saw it for a flash, and I 
heard my son's voice call out in a scream, and that was it, and it was gone. I, I ran down the alleyway, but I didn't, didn't see nothing. Was there any blood? Any sign of... Did, was the creature attacking your son, or did he merely take him away? The man gives a tight-lipped expression and sort of stares at the ground for a moment, and you get the feeling that there was blood. Hmm. I just kind of give him a nod. <clears throat> Could you just tell us which alley was it? He points towards one nearby. In a shadow, that's all you saw. Yeah, in the shape of a man. The thing must have been huge, though. Did the creature make any sound? Or did like your a... son's friend see anything? I didn't find any of the kids there. And it was mm. like a... Growl almost, followed by muffled footsteps. Hmm. I think I saw teeth too. They were like horrible white razor like things, but I mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It all happened so fast. I assure you, and any of this information is helpful. <clears throat> um he looks Are you down saying that the other steps. kids that went missing? Oh, he looks over and he says that night I don't know. I know is I never saw him again. Hmm. Well, thank you for your time. I think that will be... Well, rather it. Um, you've helped us likely more than you know. I Hopefully we'll be able to put an end to all this. Okay. He steps away uh, and goes to close the door. You guys let him? Yes. This time I let him. Mm -hmm. The door closes. Heading over to that alley he indicated. Exactly. You find yourself in a very small alleyway here. As you step inside, you can see that there is still evidence of what had happened so long ago. Nearby, on one of the building walls, there is a set of look to be claw marks. It's as though someone took a bunch of daggers and dragged them across the wood here. You can also see that on the other building wall in this tight alleyway, there looks to be a sort of brownish, darkish smudge, and you can tell that it's very, very old, caked on blood. <laughs> Two things. One, is this a dead-end alley? Ah. Uh, it is not a dead-end alley. Um, so first I'd like to, uh, examine the kind of claw marks. Okay. The claw marks would be fitting for not a human hand, but perhaps mm. one much larger. Okay. They're spaced out enough that as you kind of, like, hold your hand there and sort of angle it, it, it doesn't match up. And the blood, does it look like it's solely human blood? It's very, very old. Do you mm. have any kind of proficiencies that might help you with this? Uh, I have survival, I have nature, I have investigation. Make a survival check for me. Sure. Let's see here. <clears throat> Why? Every time. That's a 12. <laughs> okay. I think the green dice are cursed. Looking at this, it's really impossible to tell. You only see mm -hmm. one shade, though. So if this is blood of something non-human, then mm -hmm. it, well, there's nothing to really compare it to here. Right. It's just the one. And there's only there's only one pool of blood. Yeah, it's like a splatter along the other wall. Okay. Um, it, is there anything to like be overturned or anything in this area? Like, boxes, piles of trash. Yeah, there's trash laying about here and there. It's broken planks and could I, papers. Could I investigate, kind of, like, through everything in the area, looking for anything that might have been, like, thrown or dropped? Or maybe, like, evidence of where this thing went after? Mm. Sure. Any other claw marks or anything like that? Make an investigation check here, looking at all the other stuff. That's a 19. Or no, not 19. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 17. Numbers, counting, hard. Sifting through the trash, you unfortunately find very little. 
The only thing that you notice that seems to be out of place is what must be a long black hair that is thick enough that it would not belong on any human head. It looks hmm. like something that would belong to a beast almost. Okay. Um, I'd like to use my primeval awareness. Okay. Which allows me to, for a minute of per spell level or spell slot expended, I can sense whether uh, a creature type of my choice uh, is present within one mile. Or up to six if it's my favorite terrain, but that's a forest, and I don't think a city is a forest. Okay. So one mile would reach about... God, I'm thinking about that in feet. At one mile is what, like 5,000 feet? Just over. Okay, I would say <clears throat> that your primeval awareness picks up nothing. Hmm. Hmm. And you know that it would cover a good portion of the city. There's nothing in the general area, at the very least. Hmm. And there's no uh, tracks or anything like leading away or. No, no, as far as tracks, you've given it a look and don't see anything. Can I look at like the nearby alleyways and look to see if there are further claw marks, you know, maybe like a hundred feet away or so? Sure. Make an investigation check for me. Alternately, you can do survival if you wish. It's so, a 18. Stepping up and down the different alleyways, you look around and find that, yes, there is something. Nearby, you find another set of claw marks, but these are kind of different, and they're actually small. It looks like they've dug into the wood nearby here, just for a brief moment, sticking through almost like handholds. So how do these differ from the ones in the previous alley? Well, the previous ones were like long drags, kind of like, you know, that sort of thing, like a claw head move. Um, mm. Whereas this one is just like a bunch of little pinpricks here. Okay, I'll, I'll call my party over and I'll kind of continue heading in the same direction. Sure. Hmm. Kind of see if I can follow any uh, further clues. Okay. Um. Looking at the map, what kind of general direction are we heading in? The lower like our... board is towards mm -hmm. the southern gate. Mm -hmm. And as you guys are traveling in this direction, you're kind of going through the wards, and you'll eventually hit the wall if you just keep going. But there's there's and, plenty of city in between you and, and the wall. And past the wall? Uh, you have no idea what's beyond the walls of Calypso. Mm. Where, wait, where is the Calypso Manor? Uh, it's outside of the city, towards the mm. north. And the and the tracks we're following right now are leading in what direction? Uh, the opposite. Okay. The claw marks that he just found, is it just randomly in a, the side of a building? or? Yes. Hmm. Dug into the wood of uh, another house here, on the side wall. <clears throat> so yeah, continuing in this direction. Using the same rule that you had from before, Sir Raja, you continue to go and find that there's no more markings. They've run out. Going back to the the second pair of markings. Um, so they're kind of like pinpricks, you say? Yes. Like They stick into the wood like a half inch. Can I carefully examine the area around, see if there's... Like if they were pushing on anything? Ah, make an investigation check, please, Victor. Ah, damn it. Ah, uh, ten. Ten. Looking around, no, you don't find that. The only thing that you find is that up above, the roof tiles are all ajar. Hmm. How high up is the roof? Uh, if you made a really good jump, you might be able to just grab onto the um, sort of dislodged roof tiles. 
Uh, yeah, I'm just going to try to jump up. Sure, okay. You give it a leap, and your fingers touch onto that. Are you going to actually try and hold on? And climb up? Yes. Acrobatics check, please. It's climbing the wall of the city. Hmm. It's climbing the city's walls. Uh, it's a ten again. Okay. You manage to get a hold, and it's it's tricky. You sort of struggle with this. You also have to reposition, moving one hand to a different roof tile, because the one you were holding on to started to slide there. But eventually, you flip up and roll your body, managing to get onto the roof. At this point, all of you hear what sounds like a creaky noise, and an old woman steps around the corner and yells at all of you in the alleyway. She goes, The hell are you doing with my walk? <laughs> we're and looking for the monster. God. She says... There ain't no monster here. There's gonna be if you don't get your damn friend off of my roof. And she I waves what looks I... to be a, a slipper or a broken shoe towards uh, Victor, who's up on top of the roof. I jump on the roof. <sighs> you sons of bitches! <laughs> the woman approaches here. Miles now hanging off of the top of the roof. She comes towards <laughs> Sebzi and Raja here, who are on the ground. Wait, wait, wait. Old lady, your roof, the, the tiles were messed up. I've just... Trying to come up and fix them for you. Make a persuasion check, please. Oh. That is... Team. The only warning you have is the elderly woman shouting, I'll beat you in the next week! Everyone, please roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. We can't fight an old lady. We First can't. combat and fighting an old lady. <laughs> do do I reroll ones on initiative throws? I'd say so. Do you think a crossbow could kill an old lady? <laughs> a nine, much better. Oh my god. Uh, whoops, do I not have a, uh, bead here? Hmm? Over here. Do I just... where? Oh, thanks bud. Dude, Jake, oh. help him. I know. <laughs> Sit a while. Listen. Alright, there's a swing in your direction. Let's see here. She goes for you, Sir Robert. Uh, does a... Does a 16 hit? It does. Okay. <laughs> you take four bludgeoning damage as the woman strikes you across Ooh. the side of your face Ooh. with the shoe here. She moves with quite the speed. Uh, I should also get her uh, initiative here. That's not too bad. It is... I like how the old woman is a knight. <laughs> it is your turn, Sir Robert. You've just been clocked with a shoe. Uh, I'm not going to draw my weapons. I'm just going to attempt to pluck the shoe from her hand. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, go ahead and make an athletics check, please. Athletics, oh boy. I wonder if old ladies count as my favorite. Oh, it's an 18. You snatch the shoe from her hand with a swiftness, and she looks over towards her now empty palm, and she goes, Why are you? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll hold out a hand. Now, please, I don't mean you any harm. Please just calm down. Well, that makes one of us. And then she goes to kick at your shins. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Is that your turn? That is your action, yeah. by the way. Okay. Yeah. It's your turn, Miles. What do you want to do? Uh, look for any evidence of the creature on the roof. Sure, make an investigation check. I'm, I'm done with the old lady. <laughs> I was done the second she came out. <laughs> That's a... Da -da -da, uh, 14. 14. Looking around, you see that, yes, there is evidence up here. Nearby, on some of the tiles, you find long scraping marks that fit along mm -hmm. with the claws. Uh, um, mm -hmm. So, like, it pulling itself up? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, anything else? No, it seems to be about it. Okay. Um. Uh. Does that does that check also count for the other roof? Uh, it counts for your roof, and it would take okay. your action. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, after that, the woman makes another strike. This time, going to kick at your shins. Uh, does a six hit? No. Give me back my shoe! Just kill her and we'll say it was I'll monster. hand it back to her if she asks for it. <laughs> what? She takes the shoe from you and then she looks over towards her roof, which has a couple of people scrabbling around on it. And then she looks over towards you, Sebzi. It's your turn, Sebzi. <laughs> oh, boy. Are we in, like, pseudo-combat? Are we in combat? What the fuck? You're in combat with an elderly woman. <laughs> Real? Yeah. Remember, this game has no consequences. Really? S Sir Racha here just got hit with a shoe across the face. <laughs> hey, can we recruit her to our party? She has four damage with the shoe? I mean... I don't know, it might be late to repair your <laughs> reputation here. All right. Well, I mean, no consequences. You oh my god! Have <laughs> what have you that. done, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll draw my rapier. Oh no! Oh god! Oh, I'm I'm in no. base range with her, right? Oh, yes. No. Okay. I look her in the eyes. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> and I whisper into her mind, and I say, oh. "Swiss cheese has a lot of holes. The more holes you have, the less cheese you have. The more cheese you have, the more holes you have." Thus, the more cheese you have, the less cheese you have. And I cast Dissonant Whisper. Okay, I'll make a wisdom saving throw for this woman. Uh, well, she rolled pretty high. That's a, that's an 18. That sounds like a save to me. Okay, does she take half of this? Yeah. Five? Okay. Or do you round up? Do you round up or down? Uh, it doesn't really matter. We'll round up, I guess. The woman Six. shakes her shoe for a brief moment towards you, like she's gonna hit you, and then your last few words uh, make their way magically into her mind. She pauses for a second, seizes, and then with her free hand reaches for her chest and then falls to the ground dead. You are no longer you in combat. You just killed an old lady. All right, so I, I spoke directly into her mind. Mm -hmm. So y'all, y'all don't know. Do I, do I, I know what just thing. happened? Standing right next to this. You proficient in Arcana? So, here's the question. Uh, that hmm. takes just verbal for Dissonant Whispers, I believe. So, you would have uh, actually had to whisper this to her. So, from your point of view here, Victor, I want you to make a intelligence check to see whether or not you would you, know that You whisper a discordant melody that oh, only for, one for creature of your choice right next within them. range can hear. Yeah, but there's a verbal component to the spell. Yeah, but only my target hears it. Right, but they would still see you doing the verbal. Like, if you were muted through a spell, you wouldn't be able to cast that spell, for instance. So there's, like, you still talk, basically. And then it appears uh... into her mind. So it whispers, verbal component. So, like, or we the... would probably see him whispering, but we wouldn't be able to, like, actually hear anything. Yeah, you just see his lips yeah. moving. Yeah, we see his lips moving, and you know he's making sounds that only the old lady could actually hear. So, what was your int check there, uh, Racha? I'm gonna make an int check. Please, Arcana, if you have it. That's oh, a jank. That's reroll. <laughs> Lucky that's me. That's a that's that classic eleven nineteen. Lucky that's a six. me. Okay, you aren't super knowledgeable on uh, magic or anything like that. It looks like, in the heat of the moment here, getting mad at you all, this woman came around the corner here, and then seeing Sebsi pull out his rapier, she fainted and has fallen to the ground dead, it seems. Is anybody in the area? No. I get the fuck off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> um... Is there any evidence of the creature on any of the adjacent There might be. Can wow, I uh, well this woman just died mysteriously. I wonder <laughs> what's in her pockets. Oh my god. 
I'm definitely not about to search this dead woman that I may or may not have killed, allegedly. <laughs> Dude, we're in the poorest part of the city and she's old. Natural causes, bro. Yeah, bound to there's happen. No, there's no marks on her. Worst thing you can do is surround her. <laughs> yeah, um, we should we should probably leave though. Well, I'm just gonna tell these guys to look. Watch my back for a second. Oh no. I gotta see if this is the monster's house. And I'll <laughs> uh, push the door open. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay. You look inside and find what looks like a very simple dwelling. There's a, a little fireplace over there in the corner, uh, a little pit that has a pot hanging over the top of it, a uh, very simple bed. Seems to be about it. There's no monster. Are there any, are there any long black hairs, um, no, claw hair marks, or like dead children? Uh, you find none <laughs> of those. Okay, nothing suspicious at all? Yes. Okay, well... Uh, I don't think this is it. Like, maybe you should just drag her in her house? Quickly? God, just put her on the bed so it doesn't look like we killed her. But this is, this is, this is getting too sketchy. I don't like this. Uh, <laughs> I'll meet you guys in the next alley, and I'm just going to take off down this way. I, like, I want to rifle through her pockets first. God. Okay. Uh, let's see. You find... Uh, that there wasn't much um, to be found on this old woman. She had in her pocket a uh, set of eight silver and a gold coin. Whew. Eight silver and a gold coin? I'm rich. <laughs> Can I start investigating the the nearby roof? Sure. Are you going to hop to this one? Yep. Okay. You All run right. and I'm leap peeling. over. And now on the other side, make another investigation check, please. Sure. Oh, man, what is this campaign turning into? It's a 13. There doesn't seem to be any marks here. I'm going to make my way over to this roof. <clears throat> As you go to the next one, you find that there aren't any marks there either. Hmm. Can I just hop, like, in between all of these roofs? Sure. By the time that you hop back and go to this one, what is everybody else doing? Getting the fuck out of that alley, bro. Okay, you're piecing the scene. Uh, how about you there, uh, Sir Robert? Uh, Thrower's just walking away, looking down different alleys. He's gonna go off and see if he can find something on his own. Okay. As you're walking away, you can see that there are other people in the area and you pass by an occasional person in an alleyway here and there. Your group has now split up into three and just kind of dipped into all directions with, uh, with Miles staying behind to check the roofs. Miles, you're checking the third roof here when you hear footsteps coming close. Hmm. Can I get low? Sure. You lay down on the roof and then mm -hmm. while laying there I want you to make a stealth check. Absolutely. What is my spell? Oh, yes! One of the things I'm good at! That's a 15. Hmm. There's a sudden cry, a shriek of terror, as some townsperson stumbles into the alleyway here and sees the dead woman and rushes mm -hmm. to her side. She calls for help, and other footsteps can um, be heard and doors opening. Uh, coming... Oh. I'll run around the corner, yeah, back I was gonna to the say, body. Crawling over this way, do I... And, like, peering over the edge, are there people there? Yes. Okay. When there's no people there, can I jump off? Sure. You can wait for a good time. People begin to flood into the alleyway here. At this point, Robert, you are far away. So is Victor. You've all peaced. But, Sebzi, at this call, you turn back around and quickly come around the corner. There's uh, a whole bunch of people filling this alleyway. What, what do you want to do? Oh, I, for I forgot. I forgot my halfling voice. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, what's, what's going on here? What's the, what's the problem? <clears throat> Somebody calls over and goes, Oh! Old Lady Falone, she's dead! 
old old lady Falone? That's terrible. What happened to her? Oh no. Somebody looks over and goes, I don't know, I just I found her in the streets here. Was she attacked? Doesn't look like it. So somebody get the guard, please. I'll I'll head over there right now. Okay, and you go running Guess off. Guess who's not getting the guard? Yeah. <laughs> if if I can get down, I'll follow Sebzi. If there's no one like directly in the in this part of the alley. The crowds only get more intense, and as the rest of your group gets away, you find that you're stuck up here with nowhere to mm. go. Only more mm. and more people come to this scene, and you can hear that it's like the whole town has awoken to chit-chat about what's going on. It's not until much later that uh, guards eventually come by and start to split up the scene and get people to leave that you actually have a moment to hop down. All of this God takes damn. a long time. What are you guys up to after having left and uh, gotten out of the lower ward? Let's say that you guys all leave and meet back up on Port Street with Miles nowhere to be found. So. Well, we gotta find that monster, I guess, but now is definitely not a good time. I mean, on a scale from one to that's like really the top of my concerns right now. Uh, one. Well, we need to find those, you know, things. Killing monsters, that's a really good way to get them, I would think. What? What kind of logic is that? Well, made sense to me. Uh... No? Uh, what time of day is it right now? Uh, it is so the early. afternoon. Okay. <clears throat> oh, damn. Murdered a woman in the middle of the day? Mm-hmm. Whoops. Uh, Sriracha, what, a, what about that bartender? When did he want us to meet him? We don't have a Sriracha. Sriracha fell over. Shit. Tumbles happened to the best of us. I guess with, with Miles being gone, we'd probably just kill some time, I guess. Sure well, I again. think it's time that I uh, went and put these other musicians of this town uh, in the rightful place. Gonna go uh, inquire as to the whereabouts of this uh, alleged manager, see if I can uh, make a little money tonight. Are you guys what? going back to the jeweled lamp then? <laughs> do, do you, you're fucking chuckling, face palm. Fuck you, man. <laughs> well, just like, ah, oh, well, now that I've killed an old lady, better go up and <laughs> show up the rest of the bards on this town. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. I don't know what else you would possibly do. Oh, God. Okay, alright. So you guys going back to the jeweled lamp, is that right? Uh, yeah, I'll go with Sebzy. Alright, so the three of you leave. Miles is nowhere to be seen, and it's clear that there's some commotion going on in the lower wards. You can probably imagine why. But you eventually make it back towards the jeweled lamp, step past its door, into the area. It's lunchtime. People are having something to eat, and uh, there is somebody who's playing over there on the um, raised sort of stage area. There's also the exact same bartender and um, uh, key holder there as well. I will approach the key holder. Okay, one second. Murdering old ladies. I mean, we don't know how she died, so... I, it could have been anything. She was old. And probably didn't have proper, proper medication or medical mm -hmm. support. Who knows? This is a failure of the system. I, that definitely wasn't us. So, you make it back in and step up to the bar. Uh, no, I go back to- I go to the key guy. Okay. Oh. Welcome back, uh, adventurers. Is there anything that I can get for you? 
Uh, in fact, there is, sir. I would like to request a meeting with uh, the manager of this fine establishment so that I may um, spread my good talents to the common, uh, to the, uh, to the, the, the patrons of this fine establishment. Oh, I see. Well, have you any recommendations or proper paperwork? Something for me to present to him? Verify who you are? Uh, I assure you, sir, my name is Sebzi, and I am the greatest bard in the world. Ah, I see. Surely it will than, work I'd, a second time. I'd be more than happy to play him a, a sample. I assure you I'm much better than the riffraff you have playing currently. Hmm. Make a persuasion check, please. A 16. Hmm. See if he's busy. Wait here. He steps away and goes through a back door, eventually heading off, and... returns by himself. It's not until a few minutes later that he comes back out and says, I am sorry, sir, but he is quite busy right now. Will not be seeing you. <sighs> There's no consequences. Well, if the manager's not going to see me, then I'll have to see him. Uh, and I head over to the stage. That may be the worst thing I've ever said. Yes, yes it might be. <laughs> There's no co consequences, guys. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably not the person you should have said that <laughs> Let to. me let me muse on this stipulation of this. You game. might want to rephrase yourself here, Charlie. I I think I uh, I mean I'm just on a roof. I'm having a grand old time. Right, 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 right. Gotta show a couple up Monday group here. Something. Okay. You head off towards the stage to find uh, this time it's it's different. Um, there's a duo of two ladies that are there, uh, each playing a harp as you step up. How well are they playing? They're playing pretty well. You think that they're both fairly good uh, when it comes to the art of music. But I know that I'm better. Make an insight check. Oh no. <laughs> a nat 20. <laughs> You know that as far as technical style goes for playing, that you are better than they are. Though, they are a two-man group, of course. But on, like, an individual level, yeah, you could beat either of them. Now, while you're here, you can hear something. There's footsteps coming after you. And as you turn around, you see what looks like two hired guards of some kind approaching you, Sebzi. Now, I need to ask... Um, I think that Sir Robert Racha here is still on a work call, but Victor, what are you up to? Um, uh, I'm just gonna sit down. Yeah, sitting down at the bar. Okay. Letting, uh, Sebzy do his thing. So you would see this after Sebzy wanders off to the stage. What looks like the key holder mentioning something to the barkeep, and, like, moments later a door opens up and, uh, a bunch of armed men start to make their way through the tables over towards the stage. Ooh. How many armed men? Two. Okay. Sebzi, you're over here sizing up these two ladies who try to, like, pay attention to um, their work instead of looking at you, and then you hear them turning around to see the two guards that have um, stepped up next to you. Can I use a suggestion on the Keymaster guy? Sure. Uh, can I just cast it and tell him he's pretty good? Maybe you should just uh, hear him out. Call off your guards. <laughs> oh boy. Is that it's what, a wisdom game. saving throw? Yeah. Okay. He passes. And he says, hmm, Your friend is a dangerous sort. I 
think this is this is for his own good. Uh, the two guards step over towards you, and one of them calls to you, Sebji, and says, uh, Sir, I have to ask you to step away from the stage. Uh, I'll turn around and tell him, uh... Uh, no, 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 it's okay. I'm, uh... As soon as there's a break in a song, the manager told me to, uh, perform a piece to, uh, see whether or not I'm good enough to play in this establishment. The two guards kind of look at one another. And the other one looks over and says, We don't want to have to restrain you, sir. And step away from the stage. We've been informed that you're staying here. We don't want to have to get rough with any of the guests. But make no mistake, we will if we have to. Fellas, fellas, I assure you, this is going to be a, a, a divine piece. You, you, you're going to want to hear this. You, you, can take, you can take me away when I'm done. But you, you got you to gotta let me play. Two guards look at one another, and then they go to grab you. Do you resist? Uh. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, Miles is just on a roof, just like waiting for time to escape. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you know what, dude? No consequences. I want a ninja <laughs> flip onto the stage. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're stepping onto the stage? I'm ninja flipping onto the stage. I have uh, created a monster. Make an yes. acrobatics check, please. Oh, oh, no. That's an eight. You attempt to do so going to leap back, the moment that you kind of like lean for a second, getting ready to go into your jump, one of them just snatches your collar and lifts you off of the ground. <laughs> Play as they take you away. <laughs> the two of them pull you away, and eventually head towards a back door here with you in tow. Now while this is happening, Victor, uh, are you doing anything? Uh, it looks like Sir Robert's just sitting down here at the bar. I gave him my best shot and he passed my, my spell, so I'm... I guess I'm just gonna let this happen for now. <laughs> okay. You are dragged off past the door, through a hallway, and then into a back alley, Sebzy. The two bartenders here toss you out into the street outside, and then close the door behind. Okay. Leaving you in an alleyway behind this, uh... Nice tavern. Alright. I want to go back around to the front. Okay. You go back around to the front end door here. Open the door. Step inside. Uh, you can see. The now two, I'm going to make a mad dash for the stage. The two armed guards yeah. who have come back in through that door. And the moment when they see you do that, they just start running through the tables. You hear gasps from different noble and, uh, mm. sorry, noblemen and noblewomen. As you go running through the tables, headed for the stage. Running under the tables. <laughs> the uh, the two girls who are playing oh, on the harp no. have um, since stopped their music and look like they're kind of recoiling from this whole scene as the two guards go to catch up with you. I'd like you to make another acrobatics check, please. A 14. Better. Well, I got a nat 20 over on my end. <laughs> <laughs> the guards run over, and they catch Ooh. up to you, and one of them wait, seizes you. Wait, wait, hold on, you. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold okay, on. Okay, what up, what up? How far away are they from me? Well, it depends when you want to start doing what you're doing here. It would only take you a moment of running for the stage to realize that they're going to outrun you. Well, how far away from... Uh, they I'd say maybe like then. 40, 50 feet. Like, immediately, but obviously getting closer and closer over time. Alright, uh, I'll run as close to the center of the room as I can without them being within 10 feet of me. Without them being in 10 feet of you? Yeah. Okay, so you run towards the center of the room and manage to get close. They're very close, like 15 feet away now. What do you want to do? I'm going to cast Leoman's Tiny Hut. 
Leoman's Tiny Hut. Give me a brief moment. This is a first for me. Leoman's. <clears throat> a ten foot radius, a mobile dome of force springs into existence around and above you and remains stationary for the duration. The spell ends if you leave its area. Nine creatures of medium size can fit inside the dome with you. The spell fails if its area includes a larger creature or more than nine. Creatures and objects within the dome, when you cast this, can move through it freely. All other creatures and objects are barred from passing through it. Spells and other magical effects can't extend through the dome or be cast through it. The atmosphere inside is comfortable and dry. Okay. You get to the center of the room, and suddenly, a large dome of force springs into existence around you here. The two guards run over and then stop, seeing that they can't get to you. <coughs> I say... Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sebzi, and I am the greatest bard in the world. And I attempt to play the most divine, inspiring, tear-jerking piece of my entire life. Okay. Go ahead and make a performance check. Oh god, please help me. <laughs> the two guards stand here. Victor, I would like to describe this scene to you as it unfolds. All right. You're seated here at the bar, wondering whether or not it would be appropriate to get a drink, or whether or not Sir Robert is about to share his thoughts with you, when the door off to the side opens up. Two henchmen that had dragged Sebzi out of the room return. They have a brief moment where one of them seems to whisper something to the other and then they look on in horror and you turn to see what they're looking at as the door opens up and Sebzi steps into the room through the main door. Immediately Sebzi darts towards the stage and the two guards go running after him. As they do so, suddenly <laughs> a magical dome of force appears in the center of the room here and everybody gasps in shock. And you watch as the two guards stand here, unable to get through this dome of force. As you look over, the guards call for people to start um, leaving and backing away, as there's clearly some dangerous magic at work. And you can tell from your point at the bar here, staring down the aisles of the different tables and chairs, that Sepsi here in his little dome tries to put on the most epic performance of his entire life as no sound escapes through the dome <laughs> and the two guards just watch on with their swords drawn in a mixture of confusion and horror people begin to leave the room um, you watch as nobles get up from their tables and chairs and start to head off some of them go to their rooms some of them leave through the main door until it's just the bartender the key holder these couple of guards and a few more that appear out from some of the woodwork Sebzi, you're playing here and people are leaving. Sound doesn't travel through this thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> you're just fucking jamming as hard as you can. <laughs> At least your your 12 performance check was never heard. Maybe it was the best performance ever. <laughs> the two oh. guys stand here. Oh my. Uh, Victor, do you want to do anything? Um, can I see through this thing? You can't. Yeah, it's it's see through. Well, I'll try to get Sibsy's attention. Just kind of wave at him and point at my ears and like motion. Like I can't, can't hear you. Ah, oh. like a ton of bricks. Reality comes smashing through here. You see Victor over there at the bar, and he's looking in your direction as you've been doing your performance. You're getting to another one of the really killer riffs in this song, and he does the I can't hear you gesture. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the inside go dark. Can you do that? Is that a thing? Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> 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 the thing becomes dim and dark until you can't see anything. 
Oh wait, shit, the dome is opaque from the outside. So you actually can't, but it's transparent from the inside. So I guess if you couldn't see Sebzi in there, having just disappeared, what would you do? Uh, like, what I, do I recognize the spell at all? Like, am I worried? Is. You wouldn't would, know. Would I have, yeah, would I have any reason to be worried by this this hut here? Um, no. Okay, I, I probably just yeah, I'm just staying out of this. I want nothing to do with the guards in this fancy place. I don't want to get kicked out. Okay. The guards soon surround around this dome here, getting ready. Some of them pull out crossbows, others have their swords at the ready. You see what looks like uh, a fairly important man that steps out from behind the door, and you're fairly certain it's actually the manager who's here. And he calls out and says, what's the meaning of all this? Can I use my other spell slot <laughs> on the manager? <laughs> oh god. And use suggestion to say... Oh, it's, uh, Sebzi. He's the greatest part ever. He just really, really wants to play for you. You should give him a shot. <laughs> it's just like a, a magical dome in the room with guards everywhere. <laughs> Alright, I'll make a wisdom roll for the, uh, the manager here. What's the DC? 15. He rolls a 17 plus. Jeez. Oh my... Oh, he no. looks over and says, best bard in the world. It's fucking ruining all my business. Is this your friend here? He points to the magical dome at the center of the room. Uh, he... He, um... Former retainer. That's all. Former retainer. <laughs> he points at some of the guards and says, I don't want anyone coming in here until this is dealt with. And then he points to some others and says, the moment that that force field goes down, I want you grabbing him and sending him off to the guardhouse. Everybody gives a nod, and with that, you watch somebody flip an open sign to a closed sign, <laughs> and you're kind of awkwardly here as the manager turns and walks away. <laughs> you hear the sound of what's a clink over on the bar and a tankard of ale has appeared in front of you and the bartender Pedro looks on and gives you a knowing nod oh, thanks Pedro uh, pretty weird eh you could say that this is almost a better show than the music <laughs> meanwhile off in the poor district here <laughs> oh, oh my <laughs> the guard have come uh, by and people have dispersed mm, and there's actually mm. enough time for you to finally hop off to the side of the building. Do you do so? Um, I, I do have one question. What time of day is it? Uh, it's like noon. Like <clears throat> noon? Yep. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna hop off and make my way back to the, uh, like, home base, the tavern, or okay. the the inn, the gilded lantern. Okay. You get over to the jeweled lamp, and jeweled. when you get there, you find that it's closed. There hmm. are strangely enough, blinds that have been drawn over all the windows even though they had previously been open showcasing the beautiful rooms inside and uh, the closed sign has been flipped there and the door does not budge when you get to it hmm um I kind of give it a shrug then um can I go looking off for like a like a, a jobs board sure you go wandering through the town Meanwhile, back inside here, you start to have your drink, Victor, free on the house. And inside of this little hut here, what are you doing? It's a great question. So it deserves a great answer. <laughs> I, uh, I have no idea. Sebzi, it is transparent from the inside, but opaque from the outside. So no one saw what happened in there. But you can see out to note that there are guards all around you and everything. Victor, who's like having a beer at the bar. <laughs> you had seen the manager step out for a moment and shout a bunch of stuff. What are you doing? The spell lasts for up to eight hours. Uh, well, I guess I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Unroll the bedroll. Uh, no. Let's, uh, let's start digging in the floorboards. Digging into the floorboards? Yeah, yeah. What, 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 what are the floor... What, what's the floor like here? 
Well, oh I would say that that's God. a possibility if you have a crowbar. Got a dagger and a will to not be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. Uh, that's that's workable. You find that the woodwork is very sturdy and definitely resists your attempts with the dagger, but you try and you try. Go ahead and make for me a uh, strength check here to pry open these boards. <laughs> so athletics? Strength. <laughs> a 14. Um... <laughs> okay. You do not manage to dislodge any of the floorboards with your dagger. It looks like it's hopeless. <laughs> this fucking gift! Uh. This is my life now. <laughs> Relic, please. I mean, Clan uh. has a pretty good suggestion. Just set fire to it. Yeah, in the small little dome Burn that you're the in. Wood away. In, in my in my tiny little dome, yeah, that <laughs> won't lead to horrible, nah, horrible nah, nah, things nah. happening. We'll Don't fine. think about it too hard. All right, dude. I I know. I I got I got I got I got something for this. I I definitely got something for this. Let me uh, let me just look at my bag of tricks here. Okay. Uh, this might work. This might work. Famous last word. Yes. I tell you, I'm not going to jail this session. <laughs> oh. I may have killed an old woman a minute ago, but I'm not going to jail. <laughs> For like. All right, so I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need you to draw this in at this point. <laughs> oh. Yeah, let's see here. My god, it's beautiful. Were you, were you an art major? Yep. <laughs> whale! <laughs> whale, whale, whale. Let's get whale. rid of this elderly woman token. Won't be needing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going according to plan. Oh. Shit. I really like the perspective that you kind of have drawn in here. You almost oh. made it to date. Oh How long has he been in that thing so far? Uh, he's been in that thing for maybe like a few minutes now. So it's like that, and there's tables and chairs all over the place in here. Mm -hmm. And there are guards. <laughs> Plausible escape. There. And Sir Robert and Victor all are right. just... Sitting at the uh, bar. Keeping, keeping my feet and body inside the sphere. Uh, I'd like to poke my head out and uh, look at the guards. Just say, uh... <laughs> okay, hold on a sec. Let's see here. The spell ends if you leave its area. So, let's see. I would allow you to do this, passing an Arcana check to make sure that the dome doesn't flicker and fall apart. Because uh... if you're going to move a portion of yourself through the dome, then the spell is going to want to collapse. Not if most of me's in it, though, right? Well, it ends if you leave its area, so I don't 
know if that means you could just leave a toe there, but what I would leave it to is probably like an Arcana check of 10. Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. You have oh, the okay. intelligence. Yeah, yeah, I do. I've got plus three to Arcana. Okay, nice. So you Ooh. poke your head out through here and s you can see all the guards there standing around. They suddenly, um, you know, have something to point their weapons at. One of them calls out and says, Come out of the dome! Uh, I'll say, No, come in the dome. You're in no place to bargain here. Step out, I Halfling. You. Come in the dome. <laughs> <laughs> I need you all to spread out a lot and not be close together. <laughs> Do it now. One of them points at another one and goes, Take the shot! <laughs> and somebody shoots a crossbow at you. <laughs> Does an 11 hit you? Uh, no. Okay. A crossbow shot comes close to hitting you, but bounces off of the dome instead. If you all stay spread apart, I'm gonna make you regret it, and then I'll stick my head back in. Okay. You can see more crossbows are being brought to bear, but you quickly duck back into the dome. They don't seem to move. You can see them talking to one another, but that's about it. You can't hear them or anything. Oh, uh, they don't move, huh? Was that a bluff? <laughs> uh, the DD yeah, negotiator yeah. scene. Yeah, definitely, definitely wanted them all to group up. I want a helicopter <laughs> 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 and five hundred <laughs> in flat. It's a good thing you have those short halfling legs too. So you would have hear this, uh, or sorry, heard this being called out from the dome. What would you do, Victor? You just gonna keep nursing your beer? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's, that's probably what I would have done too. So I would say, with Miles out looking for a job board, and everybody here dealing with this beautiful situation, that. Despite the fact that it's like uh, 20 minutes early here, I think this is a pretty good place to stop the session, actually. Oh, boy. Giving you so, all a week to think about what the fuck you guys are going to do when you get back. Compared to Monday group. Well, I didn't... I didn't expect what the things that I saw is what I'll say about tonight. <clears throat> I, th uh, I was thinking I, I this I is think going I, really I, well, and then some old lady got dissonant whispered into <laughs> old lady <laughs> heaven, and uh, <laughs> from there it was just a rapid downhill. I, I, I don't know. I feel like I should resolve this situation before, uh, before next week. Do you think you can do that in 20 minutes, though? Yes. <laughs> okay, I disagree. <laughs> I, I don't want to be here the next time I come back to this. Well, I'll give you a moment then. What would you do? <clears throat> Maybe you can advance things a little bit before we end here. I'll, I'll drop the field and put my hands up. Crossbows are held in your direction, but instead of firing, seeing your hands up, one of them begins to approach you. Drop your weapons, he says. I drop them. Okay, your rapier falls to the ground, everything else. Keep your hands where I can see them. He I grabs do. for some manacles here on his side, and then goes to place them on your wrists. I let him. Okay. He and two other people grab you and begin to cart you out the door. That's fine. Alright. And with where that, is this going? we will end the session. Okay, much better. <laughs> much better. Good, the hut is gone. <laughs> so, to all the players... That's a fun spell. I like that spell. <laughs> you, uh, you did not get any coins, but you did manage to cause quite a stir in the town of Calypso. Uh, and we killed an old lady. Hey, first blood, Don't am forget I right? That. <laughs> she drew first blood. <laughs> <laughs> she
<laughs> she technically did. She did it with the shoe, yeah. Nope, nope. She hit her. <laughs> she had it coming. Definitely not something I thought I would ever DM, but I'm glad that I did. I am very <laughs> glad that that you said the old, <laughs> the the only warning you can get is I'll beat the daylights out of you. Roll for initiative. <laughs> Uh, to the audience and patrons, thank you all. None of this would be possible without you. We will see you tomorrow for uh, Wednesday's adventures and later on some of Thursday's stuff as those two groups try to finish up their escapades. And then we'll get to see later on how they deal with Calypso themselves. Who knows? Maybe they'll kill two elderly people. Maybe the town will be set ablaze. You'll have to just tune in next time to find out. Adios. There we go. I I hope everyone picks this campaign and it just it goes equally as out of control. Equally as out of control as what? As as ours in Monday. Mm. Well if Qual is back next week, maybe he can bring some self.